out in Marvel Comics. Hello everyone, I'm Forum BX257, your friendly neighborhood 1980s G.I. Joe reviewer. And today I'll be taking a look at the old novel comic run, issues number 51 through 60, originally printed in September of 1986 to June of 1987, or as they were collected in classic G.I. Joe trade paperback, volume 6. Now this one is printed by IDW, and originally they were printed by both Marvel and IDW up to volumes 5, which collected issues number 1 through 50. However, only IDW continued on from 51 through 155. As a matter of fact, they've even touted collected for the first time. So, although that's pretty bold, it's also correct. This actually uh, collects a lot of very interesting firsts. Um, Billy returns, the Blind Master and Jinx are introduced, uh, Storm Shadow and Destro defect from Cobra, and there's even an issue that was originally drawn by Todd McFarlane, pre-Spawn. One thing I did notice about this particular volume is that there's a whole lot of eye patches in it. What's up with that? Issue 51 is titled Thunder Machine. In this issue, the Dreadnoughts regroup with Xandar, Zorana, and Thrasher to infiltrate the pit to free Zartan. So it's up to Sergeant Slaughter and Cross Country to keep them from succeeding. This issue has the first appearance of Thrasher and his Thunder Machine, Xandar, and the Swamp Fire. Also it's the first appearances of Cross Country and his Havoc. In a blink and you'll miss it moment, Storm Shadow infiltrates the pit. And here's an impossible moment. There's a cool scene where the Thunder Machine tips over and knocks Sergeant Slaughter's hat off while he's sitting in the gunner seat of the Havoc. Unfortunately, that's impossible for the toys, as the Havoc gunner seat is too high, in addition to the Sergeant Slaughter figure itself being a taller than normal action figure, versus the width of the Thunder Machine toy. Issue 52 is titled Snap Decisions. In this issue, Serpentor arrives on Cobra Island with the Springfield evacuees, and Cobra Commander is convinced he's planning to replace him as Cobra Leader. So Cobra Commander attempts to assassinate Serpentor, while Storm Shadow confronts Snake Eyes to seek a new direction in life. This issue is the first full appearance of Serpentor's outfit and his air chariot. Storm Shadow retires to Snake Eye's cabin in the High Sierras and won't appear again until issue 63. Although a fight between Storm Shadow and Quick Kick is teased on the cover, the actual fight only lasts four panels, and I won't spoil it as to who won. Issue 53 is titled Pitfall. In this issue, the G.I. Joe team is suspended pending a full investigation after the failed Battle of Springfield. So Serpentor and Cobra Commander take this opportunity to attack the vulnerable pit. This is the first appearance of General Hollingsworth, Hawk's direct superior. And while hinted at in previous issues, Flint and Lady J's relationship definitely starts here. Cobra Commander and Destro are presumed killed when the pit explodes. And this issue's cover is also highly recognizable as part of Marvel Comics' series of 25th anniversary covers. Sadly, the IDW reprint in this trade paperback cannot reproduce all the trademark Marvel characters on the original cover. Issue 54 is titled Launch Base. In this issue, Serpentor assumes full command of Cobra and puts the Terror Drone plan into effect. The Joes detect the Cobra setting up a Cobra Terror Drone in neutral Sierra Gordo and plan a flyby infiltration by Slipstream and Flint to discover its secrets, but Flint gets captured in the process. This is the first appearance of Slipstream. Although his name was mentioned in issue 49, that is considered an error. And the first appearance of the Conquest Jet. Technically, this is the first appearance of Dial Tone, but only in the regular title, as his first appearance is in G.I. Joe Special Missions number 2, which, while released in the same month, it actually did ship earlier. Also, the first appearance of Cobra AVAC pilots, although unnamed. And Destro and Cobra Commander are shown to have survived in the destroyed pit, but are trapped under the rubble. Issue 55 is titled Unmaskings. 
and according to my spell checker, the is not a word. In this issue, Cobra Commander and Destro find a way out of the pits, underground rubble, and while on the run, discover the fate of Billy. The Joes work with Sierra Gorda revolutionaries to free the captured Snake Eyes, who arrive disguised as Flint to infiltrate the Cobra Terrodrome easier. This issue has Serpento revealing plans of the Cobra Consulate building in New York, and a scale model is shown. Cobra Commander first dons his distinctive civilian disguise. Billy, Cobra Commander's son, presumed killed in issue 43, has survived but is in a coma, missing an eye and a leg. And Grunt leaves the military to pursue further education at Georgia Tech. Issue 56 is titled Jungle Moves. In this issue, Snake Eyes is recaptured, just as the Joes and Sierra Gordo revolutionaries storm the Terrodrome. Failing at destroying their secret base, the Cobras, led by Serpentor, then attempt to stop the Joes from taking parts of it away for analysis. This is the first appearance of Lola, a fellow student Grunt meets at Georgia Tech. The story of Snake Eyes Rescue concludes in G.I. Joe Yearbook No. 3, and Destro's Scottish heritage is mentioned here, although first mentioned in the cartoon, technically. Issue 57 is titled Strange Bedfellows. In this issue, Destro travels to his home in Scotland, only to find an imposter running his castle. Flint and Lady J team up with the real Destro in a deal to get the Terradrome plans, while ousting this imposter. This is the first appearance of Mainframe, although show only really in a cameo and unnamed. And Destro's full name is revealed, James McCullen Destro, and his arms corporation is first mentioned, Mars, although that was first mentioned in the 1983 figure file card. This is the first appearance of Destro's aide, the Sergeant Major, and Flint and Lady J's contacts in Scotland are Jingles and Sergeant Day of the SAS who, while they never appear again, it would have been nice if Larry, writer Larry Hama or artist Ron Wagner could have referenced Action Force here. Some interesting oddities. First, Lady J claims a door is blast-proof, but a jeep is shown shattering it very soon afterwards. And also, the Destro impersonator is revealed to be Major Blood, who was last seen in issue 38. And he's notable for having only one eye. How did no one notice that? Issue 58 is titled, Desperate Moves. In this issue, Dusty and Mainframe are in the Middle East helping the Emirate rebels in exchange for finding a terror dome hidden nearby. Meanwhile, the still ousted Cobra Commander heads to Denver, Colorado with the still comatose Billy to activate an undercover Crimson Guard. This has the first appearance of Dusty, two years after the figure was introduced, and Rashid, the young Middle Eastern guide. This is the first appearance of Fred Seven, the garage mechanic Crimson Guard. Although most Crimson Guard disguise themselves as office professionals and family men, this character could easily have been an undercover Techno Viper instead. And it has the first appearance of Cobra Commander's new battle armor, with a cameo of a certain not yet introduced Cobra Falconer's birds. Issue 59 is titled Divergent Paths. In this issue, in order to prove his worth to Cobra Commander, Raptor tracks a secret G.I. Joe convoy. So the battle-armored Cobra Commander then attacks it with Crimson Guard Fred's latest weapon, the Cobra Pogo. This issue has the first appearance of Tunnel Rat, Outback, the Slam, the Cobra Pogo, and Raptor although his birds make an appearance in the previous issue, confusingly called Hawks, then labeled as Hawks in Raptor's car, but correctly called Falcons by Outback. Also, this is the first appearance of the Blind Master and Jinx, although they are not yet named. Issue 60 is titled Cross Purposes. In this issue, four army specialists who were tricked into thinking they had joined the G.I. Joe team find Hawk and show him a giant missile illegally pointed at Cobra Island. The Dreadnoughts stumble upon the missile and a fight breaks out over the misunderstanding. 
this issue is famous for having been drawn by pre-famed Todd McFarlane, future creator of Spawn and CEO of McFarlane Toys, and has the first appearance of Law and his dog Order, Chuckles, Fast Draw, and Lieutenant Falcon. This is also the first appearance of the fully built Cobra Consulate building in the main G.I. Joe title. Its actual first appearance was in yearbook number three. Also the first appearances of Dreadnought's Monkey Wrench and Zanzibar with his Air Skiff, as well as the Dreadnought Cycle. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.